Hi, my name is Swaraj and I'm part of the Cisco Tag Firewall team. Today I'm going to be talking about Cisco Security Manager, specifically how we can share access rules using the Cisco Security Manager. So the Cisco Security Manager is used in order to manage multiple devices under one umbrella. So this is a server that you can use which has a database for all your devices on the server itself. Apart from facilitating the end customer with a GUI uh, from where uh, configuration changes can be made, the advantage is that you can make multiple deployments at the same time to multiple devices in different locations. So that basically saves a lot of time for uh, uh, the user. In addition to this, Cisco Security Manager also facilitates sharing of access rules or sharing of any policy for that matter, which means that if you have multiple policies which are common between multiple devices, all of which can be in multiple locations, you can push all of these policies together and all of these changes can also be made through, through CSM uh, and that gets updated on all devices simultaneously. So let's see how we can achieve this on different ASAs at the same time. So as you can see here on the screen, I have three ASAs added to the CSM inventory. Once I have these ASAs added, I will now look to share the same policy amongst these devices. For that, we go into the policy tab, which is basically the global shared policy uh, section of CSM. So in my example, I'm going to be showing you how we can add access rules. Now, right now we can see that there are no access rules which are added on any of these devices. So I will create a policy called ACL share. You can give it any name, this it doesn't matter. So as you can see, there are two sections here. One is mandatory and the other is default. Now, the key difference between mandatory and default comes in with the concept of inheritance, which is something not I'm going to dive into really, but just to give you an overview, the mandatory section would mean that the rules that get pushed to the devices through this uh, shared policy are going to be processed first on the device. Uh, it's, it's going to take precedence over the local rules which are there on the device. In the default section, the local rules take precedence and if the local rules do not match, then the default section is matched. So that's the key difference. And we're going to be adding policies today to the mandatory section on uh, three ASAs basically, none of which have any access list pre-configured on them. So just for reference, I'll just create so that is a deny ACL for any source from 222 slash 0. Now this is where we have uh, the option of adding interface roles. So in my case let me take you to the ASAs. So this is ASA 1. You have the outside interface here. and you have an outside interface here. So the key point here is that both my interfaces have the same name. I'm going to be assigning these policies initially to these two ASAs which have the same name. Since the name is same, the interface role also needs a reference name. So I will call this the outside ACL. And the interface name pattern is more like a regular expression that can be created, which can match different kinds of uh, interface names. So in my case, since both these ASAs have uh, the outside interface named as outside, I'm going to use this expression. I'm going to use that instead of all interfaces. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is that I want to assign these two ASAs here. All right, 
So my policies have been configured and under assigned devices, I have two devices. ASA outside and ASA outside 2 as they are referenced on CSM. I'm going to try and deploy this. Of course, we'll have to submit it before deployment. So now, under deployable devices, I have all these devices here, but I'm going to be adding these two, the two ASAs here. A good practice is always to preview the configuration right before we do deploy it. As you can see, we have two commands. One, of course, is the access group command, and the other, of course, is the access list that we created. So let me confirm if it's the same for the other device as well. So we have the access list command and the access group command. I'll go ahead and deploy the configuration now. Let's check what's happening on the devices. So there is no access group currently on this one. So the access group seems to have been deployed from CSM on this one. Let's go back to the other device and check uh, whether we have the access list, yes. So both these devices now have this access list configured on the outside interface. That was quite straightforward uh, in how we deploy it to a device which does not have an existing ACL. Uh, in this case, we have made device assignments. Should we need that these access rules get added in addition to what the ACL is present on the device, we need to make sure that we do not assign these policies. Instead, we inherit the global or uh, the shared policy on the device. That would mean that the existing policy would coexist, the local policy would coexist with the, with the shared policy that is being imported from CSM. The second part now would be to have the same policy assigned to a device which has the name of the outside interface as something different from outside. So it, it, it's this ASA that we have here and the name of this interface is outer. So if you notice the interface pattern uh, that we had in the global, po global shared policy, right? So the outside ACL let's select this. Now, if I go ahead and edit this, yes. So the interface name pattern here is outside, whereas my outside interface is called outer on the third ASA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an override for this. So the override allows me to apply the same policy with a different name on the outside interface. And in my definition of the override, instead of outside, I will use outer. So what this will do is that the same policy will get pushed to the third ASA with a different name on the interface. So this can be quite useful in an environment where we have multiple ASAs, but there is lack of consistency in the naming convention of the interface. However, the purpose is the same. So the rule set remains the same, just that the interface name is different. So I go there and I save that change. So 
So now is the submit and deploy stage. So this is the device that we want to deploy this additional change to. Let's preview the configuration. So the reason that we saw the blank delta was because we hadn't assigned the device here. So let's go ahead and assign this policy to this device. We'll go ahead and save that once that is done. Let's deploy. So the only device that I am now deploying this to would be this ASA and let's check the preview config. So there you go. Now we have the same ACL being deployed to this device with interface outer. That is because we created the override. Let's go ahead and close the window and click on deploy. So now the only device to which configuration is being deployed is ASA outer. Let's go ahead and see what's happening on ASA outer. So now we have the same ACL being deployed on this ASA. Once again, what we basically did there was we went into outside ACL, edited the interface role, and you can see that there is one override here. It clearly mentions that. If you see the override, what it says is that ASA, ASA outer is the device to which this override is assigned and the override is basically sending outer as the interface name instead of outside. So that's how we can share policies amongst different ASAs uh, which are being managed by the same CSM server. Multiple deployments can be made at the same time, rules can be inherited or can be locally assigned. If there is any addition, addition to the content that we have viewed here, do let me know in the comment section below. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for viewing.